The Pandora Papers have exposed the offshore accounts of one of the biggest art thieves in the world. Prominent UK businessman Douglas Latchford smuggled thousands of artifacts out of Cambodia, Thailand and India, which are now housed in museums and in private collections in the West. This is something done by people who are supposedly respectable, whose names are visible on public labels in museums. We didn't understand the amount of activity that he was up to in terms of buying and selling stolen antiquities. But some museums are refusing to admit that they have looted artifacts on display. We have so much evidence, not just documents, but we still have living people around who can say, hey, we saw this statue stolen. But they won't be around forever. We have to collect that evidence now. We can't wait another 10 years. These cultural properties need to come home. A couple of decades ago, there were a lot of thefts from this location. There were attempts of armed robbery, so it became habit to keep it secret. It's a national treasure, so it's important to keep everything safe. Many of the pieces are pieces that were looted from temples and then brought here. These are recovered pieces. Maybe trucks were stopped at customs or at the border. It has more than 10,000 pieces. So this gives you a sense of some of the things that were on their way out of Cambodia. My name is Bradley Gordon. I'm an American lawyer living in Phnom Penh. I have 15 years experience running my own international practice here. I worked with refugees. And then I was hired by the Cambodian Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts in 2018 to get back stolen antiquities. I think it's correcting a historical wrong. Looting goes way back. We have the French coming to Cambodia who went to temples and took out statues. Those statues are now at the Guime in Paris. And the scale of the removal really picked up over the decades. American GIs in Vietnam. 1960s, we start to hear that heads were going out. Heads were easier to take out than the whole sculpture. So 72 to 79, we don't hear of too many statues disappearing. There was a tragic chapter of Cambodian history where so many people lost their lives under the Khmer Rouge. But starting in the 80s, we see it pick up again. And by the 90s, it had become massive, the looting that was going on. They were using metal detectors, and it was incredible destruction, just taking everything they knew they could get a good price for. So we're tracking more than 2,000 statues at 105 museums around the world, maybe about 1,000 in private collections. The team is working on gathering evidence. Sometimes we are coming to a location like this to see if anything that's been described to us matches what's here. Here you can see their eyebrows. Yeah, eyebrow and the nose. That will help us in terms of building a case when we are looking outside of Cambodia and we see something in a private collection or a museum, we can say it's definitely Cambodian. This one. Yes. So if we look at it, and then look at that. OK, it's almost like perfect in terms of being identical. So, so Piaf's an exceptional archaeologist. I can show her a photo, and she'll say, oh, I've seen something like that in such and such province. That's an incredible knowledge to have. She feels very strongly about what we're doing. broken the head, the foot, the legs. And where are the body of these feet? That is so painful to see something like this. It's sad, really sad. Looters, a lot of times, they hacked the statue off and they left the feet behind. We just feel like something missing. The soul are not there, so. 
Douglas Latchford. He's one of the greatest art thieves in history, and many of the statues that went through his hands went to museums and private collectors. So they're in people's living rooms, in the child's bedroom, <laughs> up on the wall. Now our mission is to get them out of those living rooms and bedrooms and get them back here. You can find Thai and Cambodian antiquities easily just looking at real estate porn. So in glossy photos of the interior of people's homes and they'll have a photo of a living room and you know, I'll see in the corner there'll be a Khmer antiquity. <laughs> I'm Angela Chu. I have a PhD in Thai Buddhist art and literature. And I'm an independent researcher working now to help find looted objects that left Thailand and Cambodia. All the work that I do is volunteer work. I was actually an investment banker for many years, so this frees me to spend the time on things that I'm interested in doing. Cultural institution is a historic phenomenon, so since the 19th century. Many objects in places that uh, were colonized moved to places like uh, Britain, France, and the United States. Imagine the statue of David by Michelangelo in Florence. Imagine somehow, you know, the Thai army came and took that statue and chopped it up and they dragged it back to Thailand. And now Italians who wanted to see their art had to travel to Thailand. This is the kind of situation we're facing. Since the time that the colonies became independent, these countries have said, these things left our country in illegal or unethical fashion, and now it's time for them to return to be once again part of the culture and history of our country. So you can find a lot of objects in online museum catalogs or catalogs of auction houses and dealers. So during the pandemic, I came across a bronze statue in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Here's the statue in the Mets online catalog, and they have a photo of it. This is Golden Boy. It's a very informal nickname for a statue of a standing male figure with um, youthful appearance. It is absolutely convincing in that it's sculpted to have a mass and a presence. And that presence is enhanced by the golden color of this gilded bronze. It's a famous statue that I would say is probably the, the best or one of the top Southeast Asian items that is in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The bronze statue is about 900 or 1,000 years old. And then they say Cambodia, Angkor Siem Reap province. The chance is extremely high for Cambodia and Thailand that that piece was illegally removed from the country. You basically um, would have to assume that that object was stolen. It was just a statistical thing. So I tried to trace back, what do we know about that object? What specific spot that it came from or who owned it in the past? The Met, hopefully, provides um, a little bit of, of provenance information. So this is information about who owned the statue before it came to the Met. In 1988, a dealer in London, Spink & Son, sold this statue to Walter Annenberg, who was a media mogul. And Walter Annenberg, in the same year, donated it to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So this provenance information is a little bit worrying because we, we do know that Spink & Son collaborated with Douglas Latchford in sending antiquities illegally into the United States. Douglas Latchford was a British man who was indicted for looting and smuggling by the United States in 2019. 
he lived in Bangkok and was able to purchase items directly from looters in Cambodia and Thailand and then basically present a respectable professional face to the museums who really did not ask enough questions about how Latchford managed to get these objects. He had, in fact, so many objects flowing through him to London and New York that people started to say, you know, are these all authentic? So Blatchford engaged an art historian called Emma Bunker to help him to write three coffee table volumes about Khmer art. Khmer art covers art in Cambodia and Thailand. You have excellent photographs that are reproduced in color. There are catalog entries with footnotes. He made efforts to use these books to, to declare that these things are authentic. I noticed that in a 2008 book by Bunker and Latchford, they do mention briefly this statue, which is at the Met. And in a footnote at the back, they say this statue is actually from Northeast Thailand. The, the thing about it is that the Metropolitan Museum of Art says that this statue comes from Cambodia, from Siem Reap province. Then in 2011, Emma Bunker and Douglas Latchford published this book, Khmer Gold, and they do mention that 11th century statue at the Met, which they had published earlier. It says here, quote, the figure was actually found at the village of Banyang, Lahan district, where its stone base is still visible and not in Cambodia. What this footnote is telling us is, is identifying a specific place, a certain village in a certain district. And it says, its stone base is still visible. I mean, that's quite extraordinary. So it would be miraculous, really, if you could go there and actually find the base and try to see if maybe it really did come from Thailand. Tanong Sak Han Wong is the leader in Thailand's cultural heritage repatriation movement on the ground. Thanks to Tanong Sak, a lot more information has come out uh, about how the looting was conducted in Thailand. Because Tanong Sak went to some of these villages and actually spoke to the villagers who were involved in the looting and explained exactly how these things happened. I have to translate things for him. I have to find him some information. I am a historian, but my focus is mainly on Burma. But yeah, as husband and wife, we share um, information. We, we share our discoveries. ฐานของนี่แหละส่วนปฏิมกรรมฉลองพระองค์ของพระเจ้าชัยมันที่ 6 ที่เราthe footnote said that the plinth, or the base of the statue, is still there. The problem is in the Bunker and Latchford book, it's not mentioned which province is in. So it's kind of like leaving out the state in the US. <laughs> there could be different villages of the same name. Our plan is to head out today to find the base of the Golden Boy bronze statue currently at the Met in New York to see if we can prove it came from Thailand. According to Latchford's book, it's in a place called Banyang, but we're not exactly sure where the right Banyang is. Banyang is a very common name in Thai. Ban simply means village, Yang means 
rubber trees or, you know, a type of rubber tree. So when we first heard of this place, we Googled it and we found Ban Yang in Lahan, somewhere in Chayapum. But then when we rechecked, we realized maybe this Ban Yang is not in Chayapum province. Chayapum virtually has no Cambodian civilization intact. This is the problem with a lot of Khmer art is that the Angkorian Empire spread across both Cambodia and large parts of Thailand. So Khmer art that we see in museums, you know, it's not always clear whether it actually came from what is the modern state of Cambodia and the modern state of Thailand. So we checked again, and in Buriram province, there is a district which is called Lahan Sai. It's not just Lahan, but it's Lahan Sai. But I presume that villagers and, you know, natives of Buriram, they call this district Lahan anyway. It can be shortened. From this map, you can see a Buddhist temple named Wat Ban Yang which is the temple of Banyang village. It's not so far away from the most iconic Khmer-style temples, and it's not too far from the Cambodian border. That's why we thought it's more likely for this base of this statue to be somewhere in this province. It's just our gut feeling that says it should be in Buriram province rather than um, Chayapun province. So we'll see. We don't know yet what's going to happen. We don't know if it still exists, but this would be an exciting discovery if we find anything. It's about 145 kilometers. It takes about three hours. This is the first time I've been to the first time I've been to the first time. I've been to the first time I've been to the first time. มันพอมันเยอะเกินแล้วเหมือนกับภาครัฐเองเขาก็ไม่ได้สนใจอะไรมากมายอย่างเงี้ยนี่อ่ะถ้าหากว่าทีมพวกผมไม่ได้ทํา
we're working with a team of archaeologists and researchers who are excavating the temple to find any fragments that looters may have left behind. This one is still in situ. That's another pedestal? Mm. What do you think was on the pedestal? I think it's maybe for a guardian. So we know the looters dug up this area, and part of that area, it's like industrial looting. At least 40 or 50 people were here digging. They were either soldiers or local villagers. This was in the 1990s. It was a very dangerous time. They came armed. There were other Khmer Rouge groups in this area, all looking for treasures, all driven by the demand from outside. Douglas Latchford and his friends, all to fill up Western museums and private collections. We now have access to a tremendous amount of information from the Latchford family. Through years of, of secret negotiations, we were able to get an agreement with Julia Latchford, the daughter of Douglas Latchford, to give us all the records relating to Cambodia. And that has been a treasure trove of information. We are looking through emails. We have his invoices. We have his receipts. We have his false provenance. We know now the path. Many of the statues that went through his hands took. They would go out of the temple like Prasekajap, and they would be taken across the border. From Bangkok, Latchford would typically ship it to London. So London was a center point of activity. And then from London, they went to other countries. John Paul Labatt. I'm a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations in New York. Homeland Security Investigations covers a full gamut of investigations from narcotics to child pornography cases to money laundering. We also investigate the theft of cultural property, trying to prosecute those involved and return the artifacts back home. So we learned from Brad Gordon that the Cambodians were extremely interested in a particular statue, and it was Scandal on a Peacock. Homeland Security have identified 12 museums in the US that have artifacts that were sourced by Douglas Lashford. We also have four private collectors that we know of who have a pretty extensive collection of artifacts from Lashford as well. We have a list that we're going through systematically to recover all those pieces and to scan on a peacock as well. And now we collect the fragment in the Prasad Kachap. It may be more than 10,000 pieces. At least the looters were not careful in their looting. They hacked pieces off and they left feet behind. They broke off arms, heads broke off they left behind a huge amount of evidence for us to collect. We have now found some fragments of scandal on peacock that prove the statue was in this temple. And we have information that scandal on peacock may be with a private collector in the US. Other than Skanda on a peacock, we now believe there were at least 12 other major statues taken from Gretschop Temple. Nobody's been able to figure out the exact significance of this temple. But if all these could be reassembled, it would be astonishing. I think it would give us a much better idea of what you know, who was this family who ruled this royal capital? We found uh, a lot of information that could help us to get back more statue. So now we're going to talk to Luder. When we meet him, we will try to just go through again with him in detail what statues he took out of here. But this is not a situation that we can predict what's going to happen. We're dealing with people who have some pretty, some very dark histories and have done some terrible things in the past.
We finally arrived in Buriram province where we're hoping the base of the Golden Boy statue is located. We are calling you just to give you a bit of an update. So we drove 180 kilometers to Buriram. Oh, wow, I'm excited too. I wish I could be there. ผมยังไม่เคยเจอตัวจริงกับคุณเจลาเลยสวัสดีครับผมเคยผมติดต่อกับคุณเจลาเนี่ยโดยผ่านทางข้อความในในเฟซบุ๊กเมื่อสัก
We're going to ask him some more questions about specific statues at Prasakajab, which will help us in our discussions. It's taken him a while to get here, so maybe he's not coming. So let's see. Six coming. Yes. Sok sabai. <laughs> Blue Tiger, he's an incredible resource for us because his memory is so clear and he was involved at the height of the looting. So can he show where he found the skanda and the peacock? Blue Tiger testimony is further proof that Skanda on a peacock was taken from here. Many of the former looters we work with are former Khmer Rouge child soldiers. They were directly involved with massacres in 75, 76. So when the Khmer Rouge were forced out of Phnom Penh in 79, some of these Khmer Rouge child soldiers turned to looting. <laughs> ຄັນຄ້ານເດບາປົມມີຄັ້ງທົມກິບັນຊີຖ້ຽນກອງປົນຖານາຈະຮູ້ສີອີ່ບານ <coughs> 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 For the individuals helping us, they believe overall it's a good thing to do for the country. They want to do something to redeem for their deeds in the past, trying to get good karma. And for me, it's been it's extraordinary to be able to take words, just take a description from a former looter. And within a month or two months, be able to say, oh, this is the statue that was in that temple that is now sitting in New York. We're finding more and more evidence, and I think it's just a matter of time before it's gone down the peacock. Come back to Cambodia. We're finally meeting Ban Yang's village headman, Satian. We're hoping to find out if he knows anything about the bronze statue that we think was taken from the village 50 years ago. He has COVID, so everyone is keeping their distance. ก็ข่าวไม่ชิ้นนี้เลยครับที่ที่คือห้าที่ดังที่เค้าขุดซื้อประสาทได้ที่บัญญางครับที่มาเค้าได้หนึ่งล้านเนี่ยที่เค้า
โอ้รู้จักแรดฟอร์ดด้วยนะครับในข้อมูลเขาบอกว่าตอนที่เขาซื้อขายกันน่ะเขาเอาไปแต่ตัวองค์พระแต่ว่าฐานหินที่เป็นฐานหินพวกตุลองค์นี้ที่เป็นหินทรายก็ยังอยู่ที่เก่ายกสารน่ะไม่รู้ว่าเหลืออยู่หรือเปล่าทุกวันนี้เห็นเห็นก้อนหินแต่ว่าไอ้ฐานไม่รู้จะเห็นไม่เห็นอืมคงจะต้องไปดูกันเองโชคดีที่เรามาเจอคุณเสถียรก็เพราะว่าเราได้รู้จักว่าปริมากรรมชิ้นนี้ถูกซื้อขายจากหมู่บ้านจริงในราคาหนึ่งล้านบาทโดยแรดฟอร์ดเป็นคนซื้อขายไป We're now heading to the old temple grounds where the shrine used to be to find out if it's the same statue we're looking for and if its plinth still exists เรากำลังเดินทางไปที่ตั้งเดิมของตัวปราสาทในหมู่บ้านยาเพื่อพูดคุยกับชาวบ้านที่อาจจะรู้ว่าปฏิมกรรมสำลิดชิ้นนี้เดิมทีเคยตั้งอยู่ที่ไหนถ้าเราสามารถพิสูจน์ได้ว่าปฏิมกรรมสำลิดชิ้นนี้มาจากที่นี่เราจะสามารถทำการทวงคืนจากพิพิธภัณฑ์ศิลปะเมโทรโพลิแทนในนิวยอร์กเพื่อนำกลับมาได้ถึงกลางปราสาทแล้วเดี๋ยวเราเข้าไปพร้อมกันเราแค่เดินเข้าไปสวัสดีครับเคยเห็นไหมรูปนี้ร้อยเปอร์เซ็นต์ร้อยเปอร์เซ็นต์และไอ้ไอ้คนที่ขายเพิ่งตายไปเนี่ยตายไปประมาณสามปีเนี่ยคนนี้ขายคนขายคนอะไรก็คนคุณได้อยู่ตรงนี้เลยคนเท่านั้นก็ยังอยู่นะคนที่ขายน่ะแต่เป็นอยู่เมียเขาโน้นนั่นตายหมดแล้วเดี๋ยวก็ต้องขอไปถามแกได้ไหมเราต้องการคำยืนยันจากภรรยาผู้ตายว่าพวกเขาได้ขุดเจอปฏิมกรรมสำลิดและได้ไขมันออกไปไม่อายุเท่าไหร่เป็นสมัยเป็นสิบสามปีเป็นภาษาเขมรพื้นเมืองของถิ่นเนี้ยที่ใช้กันครับท่านประหลัดและนายกอบตอกำลังช่วยกันแปลเราจะมาให้เขายืนยันว่าปฏิมกรรมสำลิดเป็นองค์ที่ครอบครัวเขาแต่คนพบจริงรูปรูปนี้ที่เห็นแล้วอันนี้ใช่แบบนี้เลยใช่ไหมน่าจะแบบนี้เหยื่อมาแบบเตยเตยเตยเตยทองสำลิดเอออันนี้ก็ทองสำลิดแหละเป็นแบบนี้เยมเยมรอยรอยแบบนี้เออมีรอยแบบนี้อันนี้ก็นี่แบบนี้ก็ยืนยันว่านี่แหละที่เห็นหน้าตาเขาแบบนี้มีสร้อยทั้งวันมีตอนนี้ตอนนี้เราเห็นเขาเนี่ยตอนตอนตุจีเคยนี่แม่จำบานด้วยตุจีอย่างนาปีใบเนี้ยบันตุจีกันลงน้องน้องเนี่ยไปขุดมันพอขุดไปก็เห็นมือเห็นมือก่อนใช่เห็นมืออาจจะเด็กเด็กเนาะเด็กพอจะประหลาดสลิปด้วยพอเอาขึ้นมาเสร็จปุ๊บก็เอามาพักไว้ที่บ้านหลังนี้อยู่สองวันแล้วก็ทำความสะอาดเสร็จก็มีคนรับไปต่อไปที่ปั้นฝ้ายเพื่อที่จะไปจำหน่ายอีกทีหนึ่งเห็นบอกว่าม,มันมีฐานอยู่นี่มันมีในฐานบันลังแบบนี้แหละนี่ประสาทมันจะสร้างอยู่ตรงจุดนี้แหละยงมือบุคคลภาษาแต่เดิมเนี่ยมันคือพื้นที่ที่เรายืนอยู่ทั้งหมดณปัจจุบันเนี่ยถูกถมพื้นที่เพื่อทำเป็นศาลาทางบ้านของปฏิมกรรมมันเลยนี่แหละมาขยกอันนี้เลยนี่อันนี้ตรงนี้เลยตรงนี้เลยทำอันนี้เลยครับลงได้ฐานตัวพงพงเนี่ยมันจะนิยมทําอยู่ช่วงหนึ่งคือพุทธศตวรรษที่16ซึ่งก็ตรงกับตัวปฏิมกรรมสําเร็จว่ามันอยู่ในสมัยเดียวกันเพื่อทราบตัวฐานปฏิมกรรมครับว่ามันกว้างยาวเท่าไหร่จะไปตรงกันปฏิมกรรมของพระเจ้าแชลวันที่6เนี่ยมีความสูงอยู่ประมาณ120กว่าเซนติเมตรส่วนฐานก็ประมาณ30กว่าเปอร์เซ็นต์เราก็เอาตัวเลขตัวนั้นเอาไปเทียบนะปกติก็ถ้าหากมันเข้ากันดีก็แสดงว่าใช่ของเขาอย่างที่ในเอกสารนะครับฐานตัวนี้ให้หน่อยเอ๊ะแถนตรงๆเด็กจะได้เห็นความยาวนี้เท่าไหร่ฐ
ไทยมันมีสเกลอยู่แล้วเดี๋ยวไปดูโอเคใช่เกินความคาดหมายมากซึ่งอันเนี้ยเรารู้ว่าเป็นฐานพระพุทธรูปโอเคแฟนน่าบอกแองเจล่านะว่าเราเจอแล้วอะแองเจล่าอาริกา We we just came from the site where the statue was looted, and yeah, we have found the plane at the site. Yes. I just couldn't believe it. I, I mean, I was jumping around in my living room. This kind of thing never happens, you know. <laughs> I mean, that statue was taken 50 years ago. Anything could happen, right? I mean. It's a generation ago. People forget or they pass away. It just seems, you know, like a one in a million kind of thing. I am so excited. That's yeah. absolutely amazing to me. That answer. Wow. We did just so much. Thank you for your information. Good and then we came to meet you. Good and good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you come here for one day. ประสบความสำเร็จมากเพราะปกติเนี่ยถ้าเรามากันเองโดยไม่มีคนท้องถิ่นนำผมว่าอาจจะใช้เวลาไม่ต่ำกว่าเป็นปีนะเขาถึงจะให้ข้อมูลเราโอ้บายโอกาสที่เราจะได้เทวรูปองค์นี้คืนจากพิพิธภัณฑ์เมทที่นิวยอร์กมันมีโอกาสสูงขึ้นไหมอ่ะใช่แทบจะร้อยเปอร์เซ็นนะเพราะว่าข้อมูลที่ได้เนี่ยมันค่อนข้างชัดมากอะว่ามันเจออยู่ที่ปราสาทหลังนี้มันมันคือทุกอย่างมันเป็นหลักฐานในการต่อสู้มันไม่ใช่สายคดีแล้วแหละแต่จากหลักฐานที่มีอยู่ทั้งหมดเนี่ยมันสามารถยืนยันตัวตนมันสามารถยืนยันที่มาของบรรวัตถุได้เพราะว่าจริงๆแล้วบรรวัตถุที่เม็ดเขาได้ไปมันยังไงมันก็ไม่มีทางที่จะถูกต้องตามกฎหมายเป็นของที่เป็นถิ่นกำเนิดในประเทศไทยฮัลโหลคุณจะเจอกันใช่ไหมดีที่พบกันทุกคนขอบคุณมากที่มาเร็วเดินทาง Ten years after first hearing about Skanda and a peacock, I'm finally getting to see the statue with my own eyes. We determined it was sold to a private collector in New York. We approached the collector, showed some evidence that the piece had been imported improperly. After presenting the evidence, the collector decided to walk away from the statue. We came all the way from Cambodia for the repatriation ceremony. Feeling very emotional, the skanda on the peacock. To see it here in New York, in these offices, is just startling. And to see how beautiful it is, it is a magnificent piece. I feel so happy because it is very important for us as a Cambodian to have our culture, to have our soul of the ancestors. Because in everyday life, we still practice, we still worship the statue. This is the return of the son of one of the greatest kings in Cambodian history. And we know so little about his reign that the statue itself starts to tell us a story about what happened a thousand years ago in Cambodia. We find that so much was lost. There's a yearning among the young generation to understand better, and realizing that Cambodian art and creativity and achievements something they should be proud of. I 
I would like to see every Cambodian national treasure to come home and for the Cambodians to have control over the destiny of those properties and to decide whether they want them to be on tour, whether they want them to be in museums, whether they want them to be back at the temples. Museums, she realized that actually returning something it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. There are ways they can collaborate and form new endeavors, curating, conservation, you know, display. I see them in Hello Magazine, OK Magazine. When I see my hairdresser, that's what he gives me to read, I automatically start to scrutinize the photos to see if I can notice any Southeast Asian antiquities. 